best radio personalities, one of the nicest and most handsome guys on the airwaves, is running into some trouble just as he was ready to conquer the movies. Our Doug Bruckner is back with the stern warnings. Los Angeles, your king has come. Mr. Wonderful, that's you. Robert Stern has changed the face of broadcasting throughout America, bringing his syndicated morning show to city after city. There seemed no end, no limits to Howard Stern's dynasty. But now, uneasy is the head that wears the crown of king of all media. Trouble with the government. Trouble with his movie deal. And in the city where he celebrated his rating victory with a funeral for the competition, even those he crushed are saying, ha, ha, ha. This show is kind of like a slinky going down the steps right now. <laughs> yes, in Los Angeles, Howard Stern has been dethroned by a guy whose show isn't even in English. We are number one, but I, I never uh, thought you know, to beat uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern's troubles were magnified in the fall when the FCC slapped his boss, Infinity Broadcasting, with a hefty fine. The Fed said the show was too racy. Howard said it was political, and he figured the new, more liberal Clinton administration would go easier on him. How shocked the shock jock must have been to hear what James Quello, the new FCC chairman, had to say. He said Infinity and Howard will get nailed if they break the rules. And he added he thinks Howard is a, uh, well, smart Alec. And he didn't say Alec. I don't find anything indecent or obscene by what I do, and I continue to do it. Then there's his movie. For months, Howard's been bragging about his deal with the folks who made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a Howard Stern movie with a title we can't even say because it's so childishly gross. Now, word is the deal may be off. Howard says he wants an R rating and they want a PG, but who knows the real story? Remember Andrew Dice Clay? Uh, hard copy fans. And then there are Howard's fans. Howard Stern has no manners, he has no class, he's rude, he's disgusting, and he's ugly. It's so cool that he says what he says, because I don't know who else can get away with what he's saying, but we're all thinking what he's saying, and he's brave enough to say it. He's great. I think Howard Stern is on his way out, and, and hopefully he is. I like Howard, though. He's he's equal opportunity offender, so he's okay with me. <laughs> There's also been a backlash as Howard enters new regions who've never experienced his no-holds-barred opinions and talk or his <laughs> unparalleled attacks on his competitors. The thing that disturbs a lot of people, especially in the broadcast industry, uh, is his personal attacks on not only his competitors, but their families. In Rochester, hardworking folks were downright horrified when Howard ridiculed their top DJ over his mentally retarded daughter. I think Howard Stern's disgusting. He just does anything to get attention, and I think that's the whole thing with the feud between them. People just told me he was talking about your daughter. I really don't know. I actually, my ex-wife in Philadelphia did tell me that he did talk about her and said her name and where she lived in Philadelphia. By the way, you'll love to hear this. I'm having a panic attack as we're doing this. In Los Angeles, the former number one team, Mark and Brian, seem to have resorted to a sympathy campaign. How you doing? I'm running for mayor. Despite Howard's endorsement for one of his most rabid fans. Howard Stern, when he endorsed me for mayor, got me more publicity than $100,000 advertising in the LA Times. Los Angeles mayoral candidate Melrose Larry Green only garnered 600 votes. But the biggest surprise came when Spanish station KLAX toppled Howard from his number one perch. The ratings today show he's number two by two tenths of a point. Este es el show más loco de la radio en español, el show de Juan Carlos Hidalgo y el Peladillo. Why would anyone not like Howard Stern? What could be at the bottom of what hippies would call this bad karma? Perhaps we need look no farther than Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, where he first simulcast his New York City radio show. Howard Stern beat the beloved number one DJ, John DeBella, Mr. Yazoo.
He says a lot of things that are not true. But he didn't stop there. Howard held a mock funeral for the beaten man. He rubbed it in by bringing DeBella's ex-wife onto the show. He sent her out on a date with one of DeBella's phone tormentors. Howard videotaped the date and featured it on his sleazy video, Butt Bongo Fiesta. Before the tape was released, the ex-Mrs. DeBella was found dead in her garage. They ruled it a suicide. Howard Stern could not be blamed in any way, shape, or form. But in Philadelphia and around the country, the sympathy was not with him. The uh, most difficult part of that was not so much the competition with John DeBella, but the issue around John's wife's death. Uh, Howard continued after that point of trashing John, calling Annette, quote, back from the dead to speak with her. Definitely, definitely over the line and uncalled for. Tonight, Howard Stern isn't doing too poorly for a DJ who doesn't even spin records. He's even doing a toned-down, almost respectable interview show on the E! Channel. Now, sure, most folks can't get E!, but media columnist Frank Swartlow says that may be in Howard's favor. What Howard Stern has done by going on television, MTV, is you see him. And not only is he wearing no clothes, i.e., he shows his butt, but it doesn't look very good. It looks like a big poodle. And it's all over. This is to be expected. The history of the business is you have to learn to be cool fire, hot ice. You cannot constantly be burning. And Howard was burning all the time. He's just fizzled. After seeing Howard in that revealing costume on the MTV Awards, I wouldn't want to see his movie because I don't want to see Howard's end. <laughs> Now, English professor by day, Bob. And the Glenridge Texas.